Hello, everyone. Oh, yes, and I can see, I think my microphone's on this week. That's a win. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Time Out, and thank you for joining me today. I'm happy to report that I currently have power. Those of you who are not in the polar vortex or who don't live in Texas or who don't watch the news might not be aware of how exciting it is to live in Texas right now because we are not used to this much sustained frozen weather and our power system, it's not just the wind turbines, it's the whole power grid um, is not up to snuff for not freezing. As I understand it, the, um, the instruments at all the power plants have frozen. And so power is an issue. And when power is an issue, water is an issue, which is why my hair looks a little iffy. I've had to wash it in the sink for two or three days now. Um, and I'm lucky to have the water to do that because lots of people in town don't have water. And when they do get water and their pipes thaw out, it's going to be bad. So that's the news from Sherman, Texas, where I am thankful and happy to be able to join you. Um, I'm going to move on now beyond my sad weather story to tell you that the quilt behind me is Spring Wheels. It's done on foundation papers and it is both available as a standalone digital pattern or it's part of a book. Now the book is out of print. It's called Once Upon a Season. You can get it as an ebook and maybe it's a print on demand book. I can't remember, but I'm sure Lorna will tell you in the chat if it is. All right, here we go. What I'm talking to you about today are thimbles. You know, and you think thimbles. How can you fill 30 minutes talking about thimbles? Stunningly enough, it is possible. So I'm going to talk to you first about metal thimbles. And I made a video because to be honest, I'm a little discombobulated with the weather and I figured I better put this down in tape beforehand um, because otherwise I might lose my mind. Okay, so here we go. Let me talk to you about metal thimbles. Most people think of a thimble as being something like this. It's traditional, it covers the whole end of your, of your finger. This one is a copy of a Dritz thimble that I wore back when I was a brand new quilter. It's a little tight on me now because I've got some arthritis in this knuckle. It has a raised lip because I wore it then for hand quilting off the end of the thimble. The way I sew does not lend itself to wearing a thimble on any of my fingers like this, on the end of the finger, because I engage the end of my fingertips to hold the needle and the thimble just gets in the way. There are thimbles called Taylor's thimbles that are this kind of shape without an end. And some people like to do their hand sewing with that kind of a thimble because it leaves the end of their finger free. This is a thimble ring from TJ Lane. It's sterling. When I am hand piecing, it sometimes comes in handy because if I'm sewing and the end of the needle rests here, it protects that finger. But I don't typically sew holding the needle that way. So this is helpful sometimes and it's a fun thimble, but I don't wear it a lot. It's sterling, it makes me happy. The longer it's on my finger, the, the more the metal warms up. It, it feels natural, and honestly, if I was going to wear it a lot, I might flatten it a little bit more. I've flattened it a little bit, but I might flatten it a little bit more so that it fits that finger better. Then there's these thimbles, these are from Lucienne, the thimble lady. This one is made of stainless steel. This one of sterling. The sterling is, of course, more expensive. It's a little heavier. It's a little thicker. It warms to your finger, I think, a little better. I like this one better, but I did sew with the stainless steel one for quite a long time. 
This is a medium. Both of these are mediums. She gives you information on the website, on her website, to size it, and I will have links to her site uh, with this video. I don't know if you could use this particularly well for anything but hand quilting. I haven't tried it. But the thing about these thimbles is that they allow you to hand quilt using the power of your whole finger as you sew in whatever direction you're sewing. And if you've got joint issues, as I do, it allows you to keep that joint straight. I like this a lot. This, this is now my hand quilting thimble. This is made by Colonial. It's got a brass end. I honestly don't know what kind of metal that is. It is some kind of metal. It doesn't exactly look like stainless. Um, this end has a really good raised edge, and that's a thing to look at if you're buying a thimble for hand quilting, because if the edge is not raised enough to really catch the eye of the needle, then the eye of the needle can slip out and gouge you somewhere. Gouging is bad. So this, this is nice, and it also has dimples on the side. I would not be able to sew with this in a traditional sense other than hand quilting, but you might. You might be able to. It's, it's good. My hands are on the small side. And even though I have arthritis, this size 8 fits here reasonably well. However, your hands will swell over the course of the day. They'll either swell or get smaller. They may go back and forth as the day goes by. It's not a terrible idea if you've got a, a thimble that fits you snugly when your fingers are one size or the other to also have the next size just in case for days where your fingers are bigger or smaller. So there's size 8, 9, 10, and 11. There may be bigger sizes. That's what I've got in stock. This is also from the Thimble Lady, and it is a thumb thimble. It's for hand quilting away from yourself. <clears throat> if you have your quilt in whatever hoop you've got, and you're quilting this way, and that way, and then you want to quilt away from yourself without changing the direction of your hoop or frame, this is a really handy, handy thimble. The combination of these two is really nice. And look, they're like castanets. You can sing a song. <laughs> that covers the metal thimbles that I have that I would recommend. There are probably others on the market but these are the ones I like. They're the ones I know the best. Okay, so yes, there are other thimbles out there. There's a couple of things I want to tell you. You know the, the almost dritz thimble that I showed? The original one I had was, I don't know, some kind of metal, and I think dritz still makes that thimble. This one is made of dental gold. My brother-in-law when he was a new dentist, he offered to do that for me. And you know, dental gold makes a really great thimble. So that's what this is. Um, what was the other thing? I made myself a note. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> you know, I was getting all ready to talk to you about thimbles today. And then I Googled Taylor's thimbles or open-ended thimbles and there's a lot of them out there. So this one is called open top. I really have heard these called Taylor's thimbles, but something else may come up. That one right there from B&G Lieberman. You can buy that. <laughs> you can. And can I tell you, can I tell you that I did not that long ago, call and find out, because it says call and find out how much they are. The price of silver is all over the market right now. It's currently listed at right at $100. But I wanted to give that a shot. I did, because where those few times where I want a thimble to protect the side of my finger, this one, it doesn't cover enough and it's not tapered. You know, like this, it's straight, so it doesn't fit my finger as well. So that one, let me go back and look. That one has a little bit of a taper. 
um, it's expensive. Well, $100, it's expensive. You can't return them, and they can't tell you how to size it. <laughs> so I called and had a nice conversation, and I have ordered a size 10. I don't know if it'll be too big or too small. She said they run two sizes smaller than your, or bigger, whatever. Anyway, it could be that I need to order another size and I will offer to you guys this thimble that is the wrong size if I get it. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know there's that out there. I will go backwards once more in case you want to write it down. And I think Lorna's going to give you the link, but it's B and G Lieberman. I don't know what else they sell, but they have that thimble. All right, then there's another thimble that's interesting, and I'll just show you. This is an interesting thimble from Clover. And I was about to say that it's silicone, but I double checked and it's actually rubber. It says it's rubber. Those of you who have an allergy to rubber, this would not be a good choice. But if you don't, this is a nice thimble for hand quilting. The rim is not quite as tall as I would like, but it's pretty tall. If you were careful, it would work to hand quilt and it hugs your finger in such a way that if you have, you know, if you have painful joints, this will stay put, and it really will stay put. It doesn't fly off your finger. This is a nice, nice thimble. For those of you who sew off the side of your thimble, this would not be a particularly good choice because over time, I'm sure the eye of the needle would poke right through there. So it's a hand quilting thimble. It's very nice. <laughs> All of these thimbles come in a variety of sizes. And when I pulled out my box of thimbles, I have a fair number and I have had more. I've thinned out over the years. I've thinned out a lot of the leather thimbles and the weird ones with the little, you know, that have adjustable sizes. Clover makes a couple like that. They're metal and you can adjust it to fit your finger and they have little discs. I've tried I've tried a lot of different thimbles, and I don't like most of them. <laughs> what you're seeing are the ones I like. So the next kind of thimbles, they're the ones I use most often in my hand applique, and they're adhesive thimbles, and there's more than one. I like adhesive thimbles because they stay out of my way. I really like them for that. My favorite is the leather thimble pad, and that's a pretty one inside the package. This is my actual package, and you can tell I've used that one. You can use them more than once until the adhesive gets not sticky enough, and you put it on your top finger, wherever it is you need protection. So you might be wearing a hole in your finger on the side. If you're me, you're wearing a hole in your finger. Actually, not on that finger, it's that finger where I have the eye of the needle resting against my index finger, right there. These last until the adhesive is worn off and then you throw them away and peel another one off. These are really for your top finger, not for your underneath finger. There are also metal discs that you can stick to your fingers that are very nice. These are individual ones. This one is a dimpled, under underhand protector, and this is a round, domed underhand protector. These are nice. They work better than you think they will. They have an adhesive, and when the adhesive gets not sticky, you replace it with an adhesive sticky pad. You can sometimes layer one sticky pad over another, but eventually you're gonna have to dig the sticky pads off and start again. But until the stickiness wears off, you put this on your underneath finger, wherever it's sore. And surprisingly enough, because the metal is stuck directly to your skin, you can feel when the needle hits it and you can feel the needle move off of it. I don't have to use it all the time, but when my underneath finger gets so sore or I've worked through the callus, I like this. 
This is the domed thimble. It's really the one I use the most. Some of you might like the dimple thimble better. I like the way the dome fits on the end of my finger. This one, it rests on the end of your finger without cupping into it so much, but it's a, it's a tighter concave surface. When your needle hits it, you rock over it and up. It works really well um, to direct the needle back up. But it, too, has to have its sticky pads replaced every now and then. I've got two stuck on there now. And sometimes I use my needle nose pliers to pull those off. So I need another sticky pad there. And you know what? I'll go ahead and show you how it's done. You just peel off a sticky pad. And when I'm ready to use this, I'll peel the paper, stick it to my finger, I'll be good to go. I also carry this Thimble Pack Plus, and it's a cost-effective way to try a variety of things. So it has the dimple thimble for underneath, and it has this thimble for your top finger that has little indentations. Some of you might really like that. I prefer the leather thimble pad for my top finger, but you know, we're all different. This package also has some leather thimble pads and it has some adhesive replacements. It's nice. The other thing that's in here are some thimble it pads, and I'll show you that in a minute. Before I forget, it looks like in that Thimble Pack Plus that there's only four leather thimble pads, but there's more. There's two or three rows of them. There's a, a little sheet of them. So it's, it is, it's very cost effective and handy. Now, the next two adhesive products are like tiny little band-aids on steroids. You'll see. Colonial, who makes the leather thimble pads, also makes Thimble It and Needle Grip It. They are similar but different, and again, they're adhesives. So those of you who can't deal with adhesives, I'm really sorry. Needle Grip It is a thing you're supposed to wear on your fingers to help you grip the needle and pull it. And they work. These have been through different iterations. They have been shiny. And then they were, they had sort of a texture that was nice and those are gone and now they're back to being shiny. I like them and I have an even older set here that is shiny but on yellow. They're really flexible, they work, you peel them off, you go through them, which is why you need a whole bunch. They're nice. Thimble It is a little bit thicker it also sticks down and it's bigger, they're big ovals. So they show you putting it, I don't even know what finger they have you putting it on, one of them and wrapping it around. These are always too big for my finger. So what I do is cut smaller ovals out of each one. I can usually get three. And if I'm not using a leather thimble pad, I would use this. They're not as thick as a thimble pad, so you can wear through them. The other place these are nice, they can be nice, is on a sore part of your underneath finger. Cut small and placed over it. They don't offer the same kind of protection as, say, the domed under thimble. But they're nice. They're good. So there's needle grip it and thimble it, and you could probably use needle grip it on your underneath finger too, like a band-aid. It would be just kind of exactly like a band-aid. So you can imagine you'd sew to it, but you wouldn't want to sew through it. There are other adhesive thimble or finger protectors on the market, and you may or may not like them better. These are the ones I like, so they're the ones I'm going to show you. But Keep your eye out. There might be something else out there that suits you as well. Okay, so I've talked about sewing into your bottom finger or sewing on your top and sewing through your callus. Some of you may never have done that, but there are times when you sew long enough that you really do develop a pretty decent callus and 
over time those calluses get so thick they start to split you sew through them and it's then when you really need that extra protection so most of the time I can sew and my calluses are fine my fingers are protected but other times those other things come in handy now the thimble it and the needle grip it that you might wear on the bottom sort of like a band-aid it did occur to me <laughs> that some of you might be eyeing that roll of duct tape and thinking maybe I could take some little pieces of duct tape and put on there maybe you could <laughs> I think I think duct tape would be a little too much adhesive for me but because you got to think about it when you stick it down you're also peeling it off so think about that but maybe I don't know I'm thinking outside the box here helping you think outside the box now um the next thing I want to show you these are needle grips that are not adhesive and especially for those of you who are allergic to latex I'm sorry allergic to adhesive these might come in handy. So here we go. Let me find where I'm clicking, right there. These aren't thimbles, but they go with thimbles in my mind because you're wearing them on your fingers like you would a thimble. These are needle grippers. Actually, this one is not even promoted as a needle gripper. I just wear it that way. It doesn't say anywhere that I can see that they're silicone. But you're supposed to wear these on your fingers when you're ironing close to your fingers and they protect you from the heat. They kind of have to be silicone, don't they? Most anything else would melt. These are nice on whatever finger you want to wear them on. You can wear them on your underneath finger for protection. Again, you would sew through them. You would be able to pierce them. But it does offer some protection. You can also, if you like something longer like this, wear them on your top finger as a needle grip. They're longer, which might suit some of you better. And they come in, this package has three different sizes, assuming, of course, that you're going to wear them on multiple fingers when you're ironing. There are these from Little House. They are rubber. So again, if you've got rubber allergies, these are not a choice for you, but I don't have rubber allergies, and I like these. I like the way they feel on my finger. And they are needle grippers. They work really well. So when you're sewing, if you've got one of these on, it allows you to pull the needle without having to use a lot of force. And they have little air holes in them that allow your finger to breathe and this that also allows your finger to breathe. The medium does not fit on my thumb. It fits on my index finger. And there are times when wearing this on my index finger makes more sense to me. Just depends on what I'm sewing. More often than not, I like a thumb grip rather than an index finger grip. This set of needle pullers is from Dritz, and there is a small one and a larger one in each one. It doesn't say what these are made out of, but this is definitely rubber. I suspect these are silicone and not rubber. They just, they don't look like rubber at all. This size goes on your thumb, and I wear that more often than I wear the grip on my on my index finger. It just depends on what I'm sewing. You could wear both together depending on your finger strength. And these also have holes to allow your finger to breathe. And this one has a hole for your fingernail. Those of you with nails will appreciate that. It takes a while, but eventually these will wear out and you'll need to replace them. Okay, so the rubber ones will wear out, so will the silicone ones. And I was thinking a couple of things here. If you always sew with a thimble on your finger, but you haven't used a needle grip, you might find it helpful because they really do help you grab the needle and pull it. Okay, 
and I've got to look here. Lorna says, oh, oh, Lorna says next care waterproof medical tape from the drugstore uh, is cushioned. It can be cut. It, it'll stretch and it can be cut to fit. You can do two layers as needed. It's cheap and amazing. So better than duct tape. And again, you want to think about what part of your fingers need help and what kind of help they need, right? And we're all different and we all get to have different choices. So, so the next thing I did, because let's face it, what I think are, um, what I think are great thimble choices you may not be as enamored of. So I Googled, I love to Google. It's what you do when the weather's bad during a pandemic, right? <clears throat> this was just Googling thimbles. And there's, see, there's one in the middle. Do you see where it says Taylor's Thimble? I knew they were called Taylor's Thimbles. I have no idea what that metal thing is that, I don't, I don't even know how you'd use that, but it came up with thimbles. This was just the first page. I kept scrolling down, and these are images of thimbles. People have been so, in, people have been so inventive over the years. I can see Roxanne's thimbles there, the kind that are open to make room for your fingernails. There's decorative thimbles, there's antique ones, there's leather ones. Now, I didn't talk about leather thimbles. I have worn leather thimbles over the years. And sometimes I like them and sometimes I don't, but mostly I don't like them and I don't know exactly why. It's like they don't fit or they wear through or I think they're going to be great until the day when it wears through and it jabs me real good and then it makes me cranky. And then there's this. Oh, I for sure wanted to show you this. So one of those pictures I googled and it's environ. Okay, it's greenboatstuff.com and I was clicking on the Taylor's thimble, because it looked to me like it would be maybe a good one. It's not very expensive. And does it crack you up that it's from environmentally friendly boating supplies? <laughs> it cracked me up. So sailors use these thimbles when they're repairing their sails, I guess. And look at the price. The price point is very nice. And they've got, oh, they've got sizes in inches of their thimble sizes. You know, I probably should have ordered some of these instead of the expensive silver one, but there you go. I wasn't thinking things too clearly, <clears throat> but this is nice. Uh, you know, if that kind of thimble interests you, give it a go. So look at that. I'm going to finish and it's going to be right at 30 minutes. Um, I hope you found this information helpful. As I said, there's all kinds of all kinds of um, stuff. Oh, I was Lorna just texted me again. That was the Bing to say it's Oki Girl who was mentioning the um, medical tape. Thank you, Oki Girl. And by the way, I hope you're warm up there because it's been miserable there too, colder probably than here. Um, anyway, back to the thimbles. Find what works for you. Spend a lot or a little. Do whatever suits you. Um, mostly what I find, and the reason I did go ahead and order that sterling thimble, is that I love the way sterling warms to my fingers. And on the rare times when I need to use that kind of a thimble, I just like the way it feels. And you know what? We sew to be happy. We sew to be happy. So find the thing that makes you happy. And if it's, I have friends, boy, what makes them happy is finding a bargain. So if finding a bargain thimble is really going to make you extraordinarily happy, do that. You're better off than me who found the sterling thimble. Anyway, um, 
Let's see. I know what I needed to show you. I need to remind you that that's my email address because, yes, we're coming up on 30 minutes. That's my email address, becky.peaceofcake at gmail.com. Feel free to email me topics. I've got a list going, and eventually I will hit them all. Um, and let me say thank you for joining me this Wednesday. Do you know what? Okay, this, this cracks me up. I don't know if it will you. It is 25 degrees out there. We're supposed to get above freezing on Sunday. This time next Wednesday, it's supposed to be 70 degrees and sunny. Life's amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> until then, until next week, I, I want to say thank you for joining me. And until then, may you have many happy stitches. And now you're going to watch my eyes find the little button to turn it off. Thanks.